I'm delighted to introduce our last speaker, Siobhan Jordan, and uh, I'll let you take it, take it away. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for the opportunity to speak um, this afternoon. I'm going to highlight some of the work that we've done, continuing on the engagement theme, but in particular our work will highlight the engaging with businesses and um, external groups, probably much more external to the universities than some of you may have had track record of working with. And I'm also, at the appropriate point in time, going to call on Michael Foreman from um, Informatics here in Edinburgh to explain some of the work that we've been doing with them on um, looking at topic modelling. So, a brief introduction, first of all, to um, Interface and to the programme that has been running over the past five years now. We're hosted by the University of Edinburgh on behalf of all of the Scottish universities and research institutions. So you've got 25 different um, partners. And our role is really working with businesses across Scotland and across the rest of Europe and, and um, the world, really highlighting to them the knowledge, expertise and facilities that are available within Scottish universities, but that can assist them in developing new products and processes. So we're very much influencing and trying to find businesses who, who more um, or less don't have a track record of working with any of the Scottish universities. And for them, it's really trying to break down the barriers. For a lot of companies, particularly small, medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, that have got about 10 people working for them, universities are scary places. They've got a lot of doors um, that they really don't know how to actually um, access. And so we in Interface have been um, quite successful in doing a lot of face-to-face -face influencing of businesses and meeting very small businesses at events um, throughout Scotland. It's quite a resource-intensive um, activity. So when the call opened from JISC for um, actually engaging and showing access to resources through engagement for the business community, it seemed an ideal opportunity for us to try and pilot much more innovative online methods for reaching a much, much wider audience. And so what I'm going to do um, today is explain a little bit about what we've done under that JISC programme. But really, I set out this first slide, the challenge that continually faces us. Um, in the Scottish Government um, white paper, which was published earlier this year, they really set down the, the challenge that businesses need a very open and easy system that's easy to navigate and that they can actually understand and stimulate better ideas. But, as I said, there's a lot of doors in universities. Even if they go online, they're actually seeing a lot of words that they pay, may not see how, what's the relevance to those, um, their particular businesses. And this very much fits with the policy of the government here, of the UK wider government, but also the funding council, and indeed of the research councils and how to generate impact and pathways to impact through knowledge exchange. So there's very much a need to facilitate access um, to the resources and much easier pathways to actually allow businesses to tap into those um, resources that might be appropriate to them within the universities. But the challenge for businesses, and these are the challenges that we continually hear as the team are out and about meeting with businesses, is they keep saying, we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what's in the university. We don't know how an academic that's having a lot of research maybe in physics or biology or chemistry can actually help my business. Now, if I give an example, we worked recently with a, a, very, a small company that's um, based in the borders, and they were developing their, um, speech software that helps patients who've had stroke really rehabilitate and get back their, their speech much better than what they um, um, had straight after the stroke. And for them, they were looking at whether the software was actually appropriate for other educational markets. And so they um, met with me, and we were having a very wide-ranging conversation. Now, it was very clear from all the letters that they'd received from patients that this um, therapy software was actually having a huge impact on patients' lives. But they had no clinical data, and they really had no idea how to go about working with, um, I suppose, clinical-based um, brain imaging groups. And so I suggested that an obvious link would be to explore an opportunity with the Synapse Research Pool here. It's based um, um, out of University of Edinburgh, but draws in expertise from another five different universities across Scotland. Now, they were a little bit sceptical, not sure, brain imaging and our software. So we set up the meeting, and there was a huge chemistry and meeting of minds, whereby the academic said, 
fantastic research project. I really see where we can get access to great patient data. We can look at the scans straight after patients have had stroke. They can then use the software and then after um, a period of time, we can look at whether there's actually been any changes in the brain. Now, for the business, this gave them a whole new research avenue. And even from the promotion of being able to say that they're working with the University of Edinburgh, their sales have increased 25%, and they've had to ex expand into new premises to take on new jobs. Now, for the Scottish economy and for the Scottish government, that's a really big tick box. The university is working with a company they haven't worked with before, but equally well, we're driving um, new jobs in the Scottish economy. So, success breeds success, and indeed, that opportunity for that business has allowed them to give them the confidence to work with other universities around um, Europe, and they're tapped into the University of Malaga as well. And that's really, I suppose, what we try to do, is to encourage businesses to tap into the expertise that's available. But particularly, there are barriers around time, money, etc., and our role is really to overcome some of those challenges. And so the Open Biz programme was really an innovative programme to really enhance the um, knowledge exchange support, as I said, tapping into unique um, online channels. And we did this as a pilot, looking at the West of Scotland businesses, because our traction in the West of Scotland was very, very low. We had a limited um, reach into businesses there. And equally well, we were, we were piloting this using University of Edinburgh and also the five university partners within the West of Scotland. But it was very important for us that we had a reality check, that we were working with business advisors within the Chambers of Commerce and the Business Gateway and Scottish Enterprise teams. So people that were every day out there talking to businesses. And so they became our mentors, advisors, and, and as I said, the reality check to make sure that what we were developing was actually um, important for our business audience. So I'm just going to briefly run through the different um, stages of that, but this slide just really shows an overview of how actually Interface works itself. So our whole focus is really going out and talking to the business community. We get a lot of direct contact with businesses. We've worked with about 800 businesses over the past few years. And from that, we've established 400 projects or contracts that have been signed with um, universities across the whole of Scotland. So a lot of direct contact leads to a lot of direct results. But as I've said, that's very resource intensive. We do get a lot of referrals as well, but really what we wanted to do was proactively stimulate businesses to think more about what universities could offer. As I said, the first port of call is not really going on a publications list and seeing what's available. It's not even thinking about, oh, should I even go to a university? Because they really mindset may not be um, geared in that direction. So one of the first aspects around the open biz was really to develop, develop some stimulating quick, short videos that would showcase to companies what was available. And again, it was this peer-to-peer -peer interaction that if they could hear real stories from other businesses within their sectors, then they, those testimonials could help drive new collaborations. And indeed, as part of the impact, some of the universities are even referring to these online and showcasing them when new businesses come and speak to them as examples of what their academics can do. And we worked very closely with VideoWiki, which is a spin-out from University of um, Informatics, here um, because they have a whole repository of academics who do have developed very informative um, videos as well. And it's worth checking out their website to actually see um, the impact from um, videos that, that the academics have, have generated. So this is quite um, a, a unique way of, again, using the YouTube channel to actually promote these. And as I said, they've been well received by both the businesses and actually the universities as a means of promotion. The second um, aspect we looked at was a much, much wider audience reach. Normally when we do business events, we do them in partnership and we can probably maximize about 30 people in a room. But when you're reaching businesses as far as away from you know, Shetland Islands right down to the borders and even stretching into the UK, it's extremely difficult and, and cost prohibitive for them to travel to events. So this blended event of having actually people in the dialogue, case study speakers in the room, plus having an audience with a very interactive content online was very, very well received. And it, it meant an opportunity that we could moderate the discussions online, capture immediate inquiries from the businesses, be very helpful in respect to their um, questions, but also um, engaging and taking questions and um, feeding those back into the blended event. So we were able to triple the um, 
the uh, audience that we had participating. In the first event, it was particularly challenging because it was the day of the, the first big snow in Edinburgh last November. So if any other type of event we'd been trying to plan, we would have cancelled it. But we bravely went forth and, and um, did manage, and actually we got a very um, large audience that would, were planning to come to the live event, but actually tuned in online. And also we're backing this up with online um, de um, demand video following the event. So that's been very successful and we're planning on rolling out um, three more of those um, in the coming few months. I'm going to hand over to Michael for the next aspect because this was very much trying to tackle that question. Businesses don't know what they don't know. And this was using quite sophisticated research that Michael had developed from informatics. So sorry to do this to you, but Siobhan asked me to and I thought, okay, will do. Um, so you heard me talk last year about topic modelling, but for those who weren't there, you take a large collection of documents and you look at the patterns of the words. So if you take a document and it's chemistry, you'll find some words that you won't find very often in a document that's physics or that's economics or that's ancient history. So different documents have different word distributions. Well, that's obvious. But the interesting thing is you can say... Is there sort of some way we could simplify a bit? If we've got thousands or hundreds of thousands of documents, instead of thinking we have hundreds or hundreds of thousands of word distributions, can we think, actually, there's something that's characteristic of chemistry, there's something that's characteristic of biology and so forth. Well, of course, you can, if you take a collection and already have it partitioned, you can look at those distributions and say, this is more like chemistry, and you can check, here's a new document, get a machine to check, is it more like the chemistry one? and the biology one. But you can do better than that because you can start with the documents and not know anything about them and then say, what topics, where a topic is just a word distribution, what small number of topics could explain the variability I have across this large number of documents, not by saying every document is exactly one topic, but it's a mixture of a small number of topics. And there's some machine learning uh, that lets you do that, and it's brilliant stuff. So... The original thing that I was hoping we'd get out of this, um, in fact, we didn't. What, what I was hoping was we'd be able to do topic modeling on documents in the industrial space, topic modeling on documents in the research space, and then where we had some case studies that said this research related to this industrial stuff, we could effectively start translating topics from one to topics in the other. So then when the industrialists came along with their language, we could say, this is the relevant language in the research literature for you to look at. We, didn't, we weren't able to do that because the number of case studies we had was far too small to infer that kind of stuff. But what we did find was that we could produce these word clouds, and Ianthi uh, made them look pretty. We just produced the numbers. Uh, there's Ianthi back there. Um, which actually are helpful because people come to this research literature and they don't know what it is, and this makes it more accessible, and it's a way of automating that. In, there are a huge variety of things going on. To do these by hand, actually, if you want to do better than this, you'd have to be expert in all the different domains, and this actually picks out when you have some new area, which you've only got a few of the world's experts in, their words come out of it, and you find them. So that's what we did with this, and thank you. Thanks, Michael. And really what we're trying to get and stimulate is businesses and even the advisors that are working with businesses to look at something like this word cloud and think, oh, I now can see a relevance. I really want to drill down and explore more. They, and that will allow them an open access to the publication lists and the research depositories across the universities. So this is early days. It's work in progress. But I think it's quite an exciting way of, again, challenging the businesses um, and the universities to come to kind of some common language. The final aspect and, um, was to develop an iPhone app, the first of a, a platform, hopefully, of mobile apps. And we, this is very much work in progress. We've been quite stimulated by the business response to this because it allows users to develop a, a unique profile to receive relevant updates. And because, again, we have, a, I suppose, a continual dialogue with our businesses that have registered with us. We find it to be a really good way of stimulating new thoughts about events, about new funding opportunities, case studies, and again, hoping that they will draw in um, new activities and new referrals for us. 
So we um, kept a blog, and if anybody's interested in any of the um, further details about what we did, then tune in um, onto um, the blog, which is tapped in from the interface website, and I'll give you those details in a minute. But I suppose our key benefits were very much, we, we saw this as a, a, a great way to actually broaden our reach into a lot of businesses. And the businesses themselves that we have um, actually spoken to as an evaluation and follow-up really see and understand a lot more how knowledge exchange can help them. The partner universities, this is a unique group of partner universities that hadn't worked together um, on a platform like this before, so it has given them an opportunity to showcase their wares out to the broader community. And overall, I think um, from working more closely with JISC and the other um, project partners that were involved in other um, open um, um, projects within the Access to Resources theme, it has allowed um, this to be showcased as a platform across the UK, which for us has been quite exciting because Interface has been traditionally seen as a very Scottish-focused project. Um, I will just finish off with the um, contact details for our website if anybody wants to find out more. And just to say the iPhone app is interface on if anybody wants to download it now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, right. Well, thank you very, very much uh, to you. That was uh, really interesting.